Hi guys, welcome back to Against the Wind. We have generated and created the world that we are going to explore. Um, now, now it's time to create our character. All right, character creation for our against the wind play through now character name you can come up with your own or use any kind of online generator but there is um, um, there is a table actually included where you can create your own random name in here and as i've said before with all the tables they're all in here as well dump, dump. here we go there we go. That one. there we go there you go name table um, so character creation is essentially just two things. First of all, you're going to be creating your resources. Um, and from your starting resources, you're going to be generating some background information. After that, you will then create bump, bump, your traits, which is the second part of your character. And your traits are things where... Maybe you're, you're, you're better at thing, things that are highlights about you. Not necessarily uh, your skills or your abilities, but maybe things that you are better at. Um, so, I mean, let's, let's, let's get started. It is a very simple game, like I mentioned, but it's a very clever system. So we are going to be generating our resources first, and we do that by rolling a d6 for each one, and we can re-roll up to two if we don't like them. But again... It doesn't mean that these are fixed values or values that you can regenerate or recoup up to. No, you can recoup up to six. You can become six all the way down, okay, after rest and relaxation. But this represents your current state. Maybe you've been traveling. Um, maybe you've been... Um, maybe you've had uh, your, your money stolen, for example. Things like that. Okay, so it's not, these are not permanent values. These are values that will go up and down, but you can have a maximum of six. So first one is your vigor. Just make sure this is on camera. Yeah. First is your vigor. This is your body and physical prowess. Then is resolve, your mind and willpower. Essence is your connection to the invisible forces, so things like mag magic and spirituality. Talent represents your abilities and your training. Gear is your equipment and devices, so it includes things like weapons and armor. And then factor can reflect pretty much everything else. It represents your current circumstance and assets, the surrounding environment, your momentum, information you have, your luck, your fortune. So factor is kind of like a, yeah, like everything else, okay? And when you are making action rolls, when you're trying to do things, you're going to be rolling 2d6. Uh, and if you fail to get a 10 or higher, you may have to spend resources to boost it up to 10 to, in order to pass. Again, this, this will all, all be explained during the game mechanics. So we're going to be rolling up the starting values for these. Again, I can re-roll up to two. And then the starting values will actually give me some background details in terms of where I come from, what I believe in, things that have happened to me. It's a very clever system. A very, very clever system of coming up with some background information. So we are going to be rolling for each of these, and then we're going to be seeing exactly what that relates to in terms of my background. So rolling, first of all, I'm going to be rolling... F Actually, why don't I just roll six dice? Let's, hang on. These are going to be the dice that I'm going to be using on my character sheet to reflect what they are. So Vigor. Oh, nice one to start with. I get a six. Resolve. <laughs> I'm I'm strong I'm strong but maybe a bit stupid right uh, essence essence is magic and spirituality <laughs> uh, talent my abilities and training oh my word I've got min maxing I'm min maxing here uh, gear equipment and devices oh my what the hell. And my factor, which kind of is everything else, this could be quite a useful one. <laughs> a four. Oh dear, look at this. Six, one, one, six, one, four. <laughs> now I can re-roll two. I'm going to keep the sixes, funnily enough. 
I'm going to keep those. I'm going to keep the four. Now I'm going to re-roll two of my ones, which means I'm going to be having a one in one of them. Um, essence, maybe? I'll keep as a one and I'll re-roll the other two. Gear could be quite useful in terms of... And again, this is a very abstract way of um, of dealing with things like strength, dex, constitution, equipment, abilities, and skills. This is a very abstract way of, of uh, representing these things. Um, I think resolve could be quite useful. Mind and willpower, spirituality, empathy, sense. Of, this could be essence. Could be quite useful when dealing with people, um, which could be quite useful. I'm thinking that I will re-roll. <laughs> I mean, in terms of maybe background story, I think having a one in gear could represent, you know, uh, uh, items have been stolen while I've been traveling kind of thing. And I need to sort of build back up my you know, stocks of armor and weapons and stuff. Um, that would be the easiest one to do to sort of justify it. Mind and willpower. Maybe, maybe I'm very depressed. Nothing's going right for me kind of thing. So maybe my resolve is really low. Or my essence. Maybe my essence is low because maybe my faith has been hit. My faith has been shattered recently. I think, I think I'm going to go with gear. I'm going to keep the gear as one. Maybe I've had a lot of stuff stolen. So I don't have a lot of resources in terms of equipment and gear at the moment. I'm going to re-roll these two. So I'm re-rolling resolve. I get a three, a bit better. Essence, a three as well. Well, not brilliant, but like I say, I can like rest or eat or sleep and then boost up my resources. Uh, let me find the part. There we go. Recovery. So when you get a good night's sleep, hearty meal, meditation, sharing stories, anything that counts as recovery or you recover or you rest, you basically then roll 2d6 and you can recover a certain amount of resources. And these can then be assigned however you want up to a maximum of 6. So even though my gear is currently at 1, as long as I sort of recover, recuperate, maybe I can sort of find some stuff and I can allocate 5 points into this, this will then become a 6. That's how it works. So let me just quickly write down the values here and then we'll see what that represents in terms of my background. All right, so I've got the values written down here and what we'll do now is see how that affects my background. So for each of the resources, vigor, resolve, essence, talent, or bump, gear, and factor, we then check the value that we rolled on the table. We don't roll on these tables. And that gives me some information regarding my background, things that I have done prior to this, yeah? So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the book of tables just because it's easier to open. <laughs> it's easier to have open. Again, let me just check everything's on camera. There we go. That's good. All right. So character creation. So this is on page seven, right? Oh, I didn't roll up my name. I'll write, I'll, I'll write my name in a minute. No, so Vigor. Vigor is six. Triumphant in the great hunt of the four winds, my vitality is unmatched. Okay, so prior to my current time, I've actually um, maybe recently taken part in some kind of challenge, some kind of quest, or some kind of tournament um, where I won, and therefore my vitality, my strength, my physical prowess is at its peak. That's why it's the maximum value at the moment. So I just wrote it there. Uh, resolve 3. A newfound purpose discovered in the ruins of old kings. Ooh. Okay, so maybe, again, during my travels, maybe I found something in some ruins. Maybe some something that gave me purpose. Something that gave me a reason to be in this part of the world, in this region of the world. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> Astragard. Maybe, maybe I found something, some kind of clue, document or map or something that led me here. And that's why I'm a newfound purpose discovered in the ruins of old kings. 
That could lead to all kinds of things. Hmm. Let's see what else. See if there's any any other parts of my background that can link with that. I don't think the I don't think the vigor result can link with that. Triumphant in the great hunt of the four winds. A newfound purpose discovered in the ruins of old king. I don't think these can be I don't think these are actually going to go together, but they're two separate parts of my background, okay? Essence three. Guided by the dreams of the seer, I found a fragile balance. Um, that could be linked with why I was in the ruins. Again, I think once once I've done all of them, I'll come up with some kind of story to try and link everything together, if possible. <laughs> uh, talent six. Renowned across the lands after the tournament of the fallen stars. Oh, another tournament. So I'm pretty good at these tournaments by the looks of it. Maybe I'm like a traveling competitor, like a, cha a traveling champion who does all these sort of, um, um, not quests, but like these, maybe like martial challenges to, to sort of earn my keep, to earn my way kind of thing. Possible. And gear. <laughs> One. Stripped of my belongings in the thieves' market, I start anew. Yeah, yeah, I'm th I was thinking that maybe this represents all my stuff getting nicked. So I'm starting the game with almost nothing. So I can't rely on my gear to help me with um, you know, certain actions or tasks or activities in the future. In the near future, not until I can recuperate and re recover. And the last one, factor. This is like the sort of everything else. Four. Bum, bum. A timely tip from a shadowy informant has set things in motion. Maybe that was linked with the ruins. Maybe the dreams is something else. Hmm. Right, okay. So th these are like all elements of my past, things that have happened before you know, we start the game. And like I say, it's related to your starting resource values. Um, okay, so it looks like I'm, I'm sort of prominent in terms of competitions and challenges and tournaments in this land. That sounds like a decent kind of reason just in terms of why I'm actually here. Now, when we actually start the game, I will be rolling up my starting location. If it matches anything here, that would be awesome. <laughs> right, next... For character creation, we have done the resources, uh, which you're going to be using. They're a consumable that you're going to be using as you're taking actions and activities. The next thing that we're going to be doing are the traits, which will include my name. Now, there are a lot of traits that you can roll on, lots of elements to uh, describe who you are, what you are, how you're dressed, how you look the weapon that you use, um, companions, I think. Yep, you could possibly have a companion. But there's a lot here, but you can sort of pick and choose the ones you want. Now, Cesar recommends uh, at least T21, which is background. 22, your role. 23, a gift. 24, a skill, something that you're very good at. And 38, a weapon. So these are, these are just things that um, add a little bit of color and flavor to, to what you're trying to do and how you're trying to attempt things. This is another way that you can modify the action roles of the activities that you try to do. You see, the, the basic premise, and again, I explained this before, but when you try and do something, an action, an activity, a combat, whatever, you roll two dice and you're trying to get a 10 plus to pass. If you don't get a 10 plus, 10 plus then you fail. But what you can do is you can spend resources to boost up the number. So, for example, I could use maybe, let's say that I'm in combat. I roll an eight. I fail to hit them because I only roll an eight. It's not a ten. But what I could do maybe is use two points of vigor to represent my strength in wrestling my opponent to the ground. I use two points from that, so my vigor would go down to four. I would add two points here which would then make it a 10, which would make it a success. But my vigor would now be four until I have a chance to recover and gain back resource points and allocate them there. 
Another thing you can do is with your traits. If you think that the action or the activity that you're trying to do is linked with one of your traits that can help you, what you will then do is you will state that you're going to use your trait to help you. You spend one resource point and you can double one of the dice you rolled. So we had this, for example, okay, an eight. What I could do, instead of using two resource points to boost up to 10, what I could say is, oh, hang on, um, I have an extremely good weapon which could help me in this combat. Yeah? And that could be, dump, dump. Yeah, something that you rolled up on this table here, this trait here. So you could say, okay, I'm gonna use my weapon to help me in this attack. So what you would do then is you would use a point of that resource, so this gear would go down to zero. Now, that doesn't mean that you have nothing left, it just means you can't utilize that resource anymore until you recover. If all of them are zero, you, you, you're dead, you know, game over. But what you would then do is spend a point and you would double one of your dice. So in this case, the eight would become a 12, because you're doubling the highest one. You don't get that extra two. Yeah, You wouldn't get double six plus the two. You just take double one dice and ignore the other dice. So if I had rolled this, for example, instead of spending three resource points to get, move it up to 10, if I have a trait which I can link with this, I can realistically say this trait would help me with this roll, I can then spend one resource related to that trait. I can then double one of the dice. So instead of seven, I'd then have eight. And then I can use resources to boost it up to 10. Um, I suppose that rolling for every single type of trait would give you more traits that you could use in terms of linking to the actions that you're going to take, but it might be a bit of an effort to kind of roll every single one. I'm, I'm thinking that I want to roll, I don't know if I want a companion though, not, maybe not, not for this game, um, so I'm thinking that maybe I won't roll the companion, I'll roll everything else, a quirk, quirk can always bring about good role playing. Uh, animal feature, mineral feature, plant, magical feature, no. So I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll roll for everything, everything except companion, animal feature, mineral feature, plant feature, magical feature. I won't do any of those, but I'll roll all of the others, including name. And once again, I'm going to use the book of tables because it's easier to open <laughs> on camera. So let me just quickly write down the ones I'm going to be rolling and then we can roll and see what we get. Right, so I have, let me just make sure that's on camera, get rid of that, don't need that, right, there we go, right, um, I've listed down the traits I'm going to be doing, it still seems a quite a lot, um, I'm thinking maybe I should get rid of some, maybe I won't do voice, um, Eyes, hair, build, quirk. Uh, I think everything else, everything else I think is going to be okay. But it's, it's a lot there. But just pick the ones you want. It's, it's fine. You can, you can always manipulate the use of a trait as long as you, you try and justify it. Right. Um, and like I say, I'm going to use the book of table because it's just easier to keep open. So the first thing we're going to be rolling is actually the name, which is here. Prefix and suffix. I'm going to go with this. You can use an online name generator or maybe use some other resource in terms of generating a name. It's perfectly up, perfectly fine. But I'm just going to use the, I'm going to use the book here because it's available. So my character's name, two uh, d six. Right. Um, actually, no. I'm going to use the d twelve again on this one. I think. Uh, so prefix, we get a twelve. Kale. K a e l. Um, and then the suffix, a five, var, kale var. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll up the other traits um, and then see 
whether I don't know. I'm not sure whether my character is going to be male or female yet. I don't. I don't know. I'm going to wait and see what the traits give me. I think. But for all the other traits, should I use two d six or should I use d twelve? I think I'm going to use d twelve because again, I'm, I'm thinking that these may not be bell curve suitable. Maybe they are. I don't know. But I'm going, to, I'm going to roll d12 for all of these. And I'm going to ignore ones. Right, so... Let's move this a bit out of the way so we can see... So we can see what I'm rolling. There we go. Right. So, first trait for Kaelvar is going to be background. What's his background? Or her background? I don't know what, what gender this uh, character is going to be yet. So I'm going to be rolling a d12, not 2d6. So we roll and we get an 8. A merchant. That's not good. I've had all my stuff nicked, haven't I? And I'm a merchant. <laughs> roll. I'll get a 12. A bone witch, which kind of leads me towards female. Okay. Okay, so I'm a merchant by trade, but... A bone witch in nature. Ooh, okay. So that that could go along with my magical prowess, which I don't think is very good, is it? My essence is only a three at the moment. Okay. It's, I mean, it's possible. Like I say, if I if I do some recovery or rest, I'd actually allocate more points to essence to make me maybe more useful or powerful in terms of magic. But I'm a bone witch. Okay. <laughs> What's my gift? A ten. Weapon link. So I have a link with a specific weapon or a specific type of weapon. I'm thinking that maybe this would be some kind of affinity, some kind of spiritual affinity with a certain type of weapon. Not a particular weapon because, again, I've just had all my stuff nicked. <laughs> <laughs> um, but maybe I have some kind of spiritual, almost like a spiritual level, some kind of affinity with a kind of weapon. Maybe that's what I'm going to be rolling up because we've got weapon down here. Look, what's next? Skill. Skill is a four. Masterful diplomacy. Well, it didn't work very well in the thieves market, did it? Um, <laughs> I don't know. My background's all about sort of tournaments, physical tournaments, and yeah, I'm a merchant. Masterful diplomacy. <laughs> mm. Let's try and work that somehow. All right, next is quirk. Uh, I may or may not use this. It depends how bad it is. Let's see what, <laughs> see what it is. I've got a seven. Talks to plants. That could actually work. That could possibly work. What's next? Uh, okay, we need to go to over to here. Because then we're missing a load of these ones. I'm not going to be rolling a load of these ones. But we are going to be rolling on thump eyes. So what do my eyes look like? Eight. Confident and assertive. That could link with my skill. Masterful diplomacy, possibly. Right, now we've got to turn the page for the next one. Bump. Yeah, I have just put a little tab here because this is where the game machine is on the next page. Right. Now we come to these ones. Next up is hair we're going to be rolling for. What does my hair look like? 11, braided with colourful beads. Um, okay. Again, kind of makes me think that this could be a female character. Okay. Build. We get a six. <laughs> burly, burly with a wide stance. Okay. I mean, this could possibly come from a background with horses, maybe. Riding horses. Yeah, possibly. Vo okay, voice I'm not going to do because I'm not a very good voice actor and I don't want to force myself into making you know, certain voice sounds and noises every time I want my character to speak or whatever. <laughs> uh, okay, attire. Up here. Dun -dun. Four. Charred black. Edged with crimson. Ooh, yes, I like that. Um, I mean, if you're if you're planning to play this game and use a miniature to represent your character, this can actually help you to, you know, select the right paint colors and the right model design 
So like, for example, I'm thinking that this could be you know, a fairly muscular, a fairly sort of large build woman, uh, braided hair, um, black edged with crimson attire. Um, hmm, there's some artisan guild models that spring to mind. I think the the Northman sets, I think from Artisan Guild, I think there's some models in there that could actually fit this quite well. I don't actually have those models, but they could actually fit what I'm rolling up quite well. Hmm. Adornment, what do we get for our adornment? We get an eight. A woven bracelet with charms. That goes well actually with our hair, which is braided with colorful beads. Uh, it could also link up with the level of technology and the, the style of religion that's the, sort of prevalent in this area. Okay. Trinket. What trinket do I have? Two. A whispering seashell. Um, okay. I mean, another thing that I'm liking is I'm not really rolling up anything sort of majorly valuable or maybe things that I would be missing after the thieves stole everything. I mean, they probably wouldn't take a woven bracelet with charms, you know, so, or a whispering seashell. I, I don't think the thieves would probably take those, so I've probably still got those. But if I'd rolled, for example, like an engraved pocket watch, I'm kind of thinking that the thieves would probably have taken that. Right, and the last thing we need to roll up is, let me move the book, Junk. make sure it's on camera. Last thing we're rolling up is the weapon. What weapon is my character going to be using? And again, I'm thinking that the weapon I roll is the one that they're going to have a weapon link with. They're like spiritually linked with this style of weapon, you know, in terms of being able to use it really well. It just seems natural. So I'm going to be rolling D12 again. 11. A war hammer from the heart of a mountain. Now, I'm thinking that this could potentially have been stolen by the thieves, but maybe I left it. Maybe I left it in my room at that point of time. So maybe this is the, maybe this is the single, <laughs> maybe this is the single piece of gear that I've got left yeah? because I forgot to bring it with me. It's, I left it in my room, and therefore I've still got it. <laughs> and that essentially is character creation. It's very simple, very quick, but it gives you a lot of depth. It kind of gives you the same kind of depth that you would normally find by rolling abilities and rolling up skills and abilities and spells and everything else. But without the specifics, it's very abstract, but you can kind of still get the same depth in terms of your, your character. Um, so we've got Kelvar, and we're going to make them female. Okay. Warhammer. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's... I think there's some artisan guild miniatures that would fit this perfectly, but like I said, I don't actually have that set. Um, do I have any miniatures that could fit this? Possibly some Rackham, some of my Rackham Celts, maybe. Um, but they're kind of lacking in clothing and in a wintry sort of setting. I don't think the Rackham Celts are going to be very warm. <laughs> I'll see. I may not use miniatures for this game. I may just use tokens or something okay so I mean what, what you would do now is essentially you would take the information that we've rolled and with the background that's generated from the resources and then with the traits that you've generated as well you would come up with your idea your personality your story for your character in our case Kaelvar right with our character and our world ready, we can now start playing Against the Wind.